Been great. Um, we got our next video, lesson 16, applying properties of operations to multiply and divide rational numbers. What do I need for class today? You need to make sure you got your Eureka Math uh, book and you need to make sure you got a pencil with you, okay? All right, so let's get on to the next part here. All right, so we have a standard and we have a performance-based objective. We're going to change up the way we do some things today. Uh, for right now, like uh, we're going to start listening to our standards and our PBOs at the very beginning of our videos so we know exactly what it is we're trying to do. So the standard we're going to be covering is 7.ns.a.2c. Apply properties of operations as strategies to multiply and divide rational numbers. So what is our performance-based objective? Students will be able to analyze the number of negative terms in an expression in order to determine the overall sign of the expression. So this is going to be a pretty simple lesson, okay? So just be, just work with me and we'll be able to get all this together and we'll be able to do good, okay? All right, so we had a warm-up, okay? This was a problem that we had issues with and we need to make sure we really fix this because this, this was on the quiz last time and I want to make sure we hit this hard, okay? So which situation can be modeled by the expression 60 plus a negative 40 plus 80? Okay, so remember, we're looking at specifically, we're looking for specific numbers here. We're looking at an increase in 60, a decrease in 40, and an increase in 80. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So my ran 60 meters north from a starting point, turned around and ran 40 meters south, and then turned around again and ran 80 meters north to a stopping point. The expression represents their distance from the starting point in meters. Okay. So the starting point is zero, okay? So we have a starting point of zero. She went north 60 meters. Then she went south 40 meters. Then she went north 80 meters, okay? So I have an increase, a decrease, and an increase, okay? So, so far, my running a distance of 60 meters sounds good so far. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The temperature at noon in Veronica City was 60 degrees Fahrenheit. By 8 p.m., the temperature had dropped to 40 degrees Fahrenheit the next day, and it had increased to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The expression represents the total temperature change over a 24-hour period. Okay, here's the problem, okay, in this situation. We, in this one here, we don't start at zero, then increase 60 degrees. We start at 60, decrease by 40, and then increase by 80. Since there's no increasing to 60, this cannot be the correct answer. This one is a no. All right. Jennifer opened a new savings account on Thursday with a deposit of $60. She made a deposit of 40 on Friday and a withdrawal on 80 on Saturday. The expression represents her new account of balance. Okay, so let's look at this one. So she started off with a $0 balance, deposits $60, that's an increase, but then deposits $40 and subtracts out $80. That does not look like that. That is not going to be right either. Carla processed 60 boxes for shipping on Monday, 40 on Tuesday, and 80 on Wednesday. So when she came in, Carla had done nothing. Then she increased it by 60, increased by 40, and then increased by 80. Okay, again, that does not look like that. So that cannot be the correct answer, which means the first one is the correct answer. That is your expression. Remember, in order for us to model any type of expression, we have to start off with a starting point of zero. Okay, that's how we increase by 60. Okay, we can't start off at 60. That makes no sense. Okay, so my ran an increase of 60 meters. All right, so let's get moving. All right, so students will be able to analyze the number of negative terms in an expression in order to determine the overall sign of the expression. All right, well, ooh. Well, we got, it looks like the first thing we're going to be working with is actually properties, okay? So lesson 16, applying the properties of operations to multiply and divide rational numbers. Okay, so evaluate the expression flow using the commutative and associative properties to efficiently multiply rational numbers. Okay, so evaluate the expression below. Negative 6 times 2 plus a negative 2 
or sorry, negative 6 times 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 5 times a negative 3. Okay? So part A says we're going to evaluate the expression. All right. Well, negative 6 times 2 is a negative 12 times a negative 2 times a negative 5 times a negative 3. Okay, negative 2 times a negative 12 is a positive 24 times a negative 5 times a negative 3. Okay, then we get 24 times a negative 5 is a negative 120 times a negative 3 it gives me a positive 360. Okay, so what types of strategies are you used to evaluate the expression? I really didn't use anything fancy. Okay, I just multiplied straight across. Okay, is there another way we could have done this to make it a little easier? Hmm? Uh, there was, there. I mean, there's a couple other things we could do. I mean, we could have sat there and rearranged this a little bit. We could have done a negative six times and then grouped together two times negative two times a negative five and then multiplied by a negative three. We could have grouped those together because two times two is a negative four and a negative four times a negative five would have been a negative 20. Negative 20 is a lot easier to multiply than having to go straight across. So, I mean, there's other ways we could have done this, all right? Now, look at D. D is important. What is the sign of the product and how is the sign determined? Okay, so we know the sign of the product is positive, okay? But I could have figured out this was positive long before I multiplied it, okay? Because I could have looked at the number of negative signs, okay? I count one, two, three, four. So four negatives gives me a positive answer. Okay. Now, what if this was a positive six instead of a negative six? What would have happened to my answer? Well, instead of a negative 12, I would have had a positive 12, and that would have changed everything else after that, right? So what if I had a positive or negative answer? Okay, so if I had three negatives, if I had three negatives, I would have had a negative answer. Okay? I want you to think about that. Why did we get this? Why, why is it when we have four, it's positive, but when we have three, it's negative? Okay, is there some kind of pattern here that we're not seeing? Huh? Do you think there's a pattern that's not being recognized? Well, let's look at it this way. Okay, if I have a negative 6 times a negative 3, I get a what? Positive. Answer. Okay, and how many negatives were here? There were two. What about a negative 6 times 3? That's a negative. How many negatives are here? One. So, 1, 3 give me negative answers, but 2 and 4 give me a positive answer. See, 1 and 3. What is special about 1 and 3? Hmm. Oh! 1 and 3 are odds. 1 and 3 are odd numbers, which makes 2 and 4 even numbers. So if I have a odd, then I will have a negative number. But if I have evens, I get a positive. Oh, man. That's going to make things a lot easier for me. Oh my goodness, I wonder if I can apply that to some problems coming up. Let's see. Let me see if I can apply that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the next problems, if it flips for me here. Oh, give me a second. There we go. So uh, find an efficient strategy to evaluate the expression to complete the work. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the number of negative signs. I got one, two, three. So I have three negatives. So my answer is most likely going to be what? Negative. Okay, so now that I know that, I don't have to worry about the negatives. Now I can just rearrange some stuff here. Okay, um, let's see. So what's 1 times 3, we'll put that together, times 10 times 2 times 2. So we'll use the associative property here. 
substitute property. 1 times 3 is 3 times 10 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 10 is 40. Okay, 3 times 40 then is 120. But am I done? No, I'm not done because according to this, I had three negatives, which means my answer is negative. Now I'm done. So negative 120. All right, so we're going to do these two for classwork tomorrow. So these are our classwork assignments, hence why we got we do's on them. We're going to do those together tomorrow. All right, so let's go to the next problem. All right, uh, this, okay, exercise four, this is going to be a they do, so this is your homework tonight. All right, so look at it, I do. Rewrite, okay, so example two, use the distributive property to multiply rational numbers. Rewrite the mixed number as a sum, then multiply using the distributive property. Okay, so before I get there, I want you to realize something. Mixed numbers are a very special set of numbers here. Okay, when you're working with mixed numbers, okay, you can rewrite them as addition problems. Two plus two thirds. Three and one fifth is the same as saying three plus one fifth. Four and two thirds is the same as saying four plus two thirds. They can be rewritten as multiplication or addition problems. So when we get a problem like a negative six times five and one third. I can rewrite that. Okay. Now the first thing we need to check out though, how many negatives do I have? Right. I only have one. So one negative gives me a negative answer. So I need to remember that. Okay. So now I can rewrite this a negative six times five plus one third. Okay. Because five and one third is the same as me saying five plus one third. So a negative six times five, plus a negative six times one third. Okay, well a negative six times five is a negative 30 plus one third of a negative six. One third of a negative six is a negative two. So a negative 30 plus a negative two is a negative 32. Okay, and I left the negatives. Yes, I shouldn't have done that, and I'm sorry, okay? All right, but that's your answer, negative 32. All right, this is going to be your homework. I want you to practice it. Okay, so remember, okay, mixed numbers have a very special ability in order to, that they can break up into an addition problem, which makes using the distributive property a lot easier to do when it comes to working with a mixed number. Okay, so don't forget that when you're working on your homework. All right, let's move on. All right, so a couple more I do's, okay? So example number three says, use the distributive property to multiply rational numbers. Okay, now, okay, uh, I cannot check whether or not I'm gonna be able to use the negative or positive rules here, okay? The reason why I know I can't is because I got an addition sign here. Counting the number of positive negative numbers only works with multiplication and division. That is the first thing you need to remember. Multiplication and division are the only times that I can use the counting of the positive negatives to determine whether or not my answer is positive or negative. All right, 16 times 3 eighths, okay? <clears throat> well, let's see. The 8 reduces out here to 1. That becomes 2. So 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6 plus a fourth of 16. Fourth of a 16, so 16 divided by four gives me four, okay? So a negative six plus four, okay? So negative six has the largest absolute value, so my answer is gonna be negative. So six minus four is two. So I get a negative two, okay? Not hard, all right? You can use your calculators here if you want to, but I need you to be able to practice multiplying by fractions without a calculator. It is imperative that you know how to do fractions without calculators. Okay? If I need to, you tomorrow, remind me and I will go over how to, how to multiply whole numbers by fractions. I'll show you how to simplify and all that and we can work that out, okay? 
All right, let's look at uh, example number four, using the multiplicative inverse to rewrite division as multiplication. Okay, the multiplicative inverse, if you remember, is no different than sitting here talking about the reciprocal. Okay, reciprocal. Oh, my gracious, I cannot write. All right, multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. Okay. So when you get to 1 divided by 2 thirds, that's no different than sitting here saying 1 times 3 halves, okay? These are the same, okay? So rewrite the expression as only multiplication, then evaluate. Okay, remember what I said. It's 1 divided by 2 thirds, okay? We're going to do a little bit of grouping here, all right? So 1 divided by 2 thirds is the same as saying 1 times... 3 halves times a negative 8 times 3, and then reciprocal of a negative 1 half would be a negative 2. Now I can sit here and count. How many negatives do I have? I got 1 and I got 2. So I have 2 negatives, okay, which is the same as having a positive answer. All right, so I'm going to have a positive answer. All right, so now I need to sit here and figure out if I can rearrange this a little bit. Uh, let's see. I want to move this 3 halves next to this 2. So I'm going to rewrite my problem as 1 times 8 times 3, okay, times 2 times 3 halves, okay? 1 times 8 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24 times, now 2 times 3 halves, okay? 2 times 3 halves, so 2 times 3 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now I have 24 thirds, or 24 times 3, okay? 24 times 3, 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and since I have two negatives, my answer is positive, so it's a 72, okay? That's how we got to that. Again, make sure you're keeping up with your questions. If you have questions, write them down so we can answer them tomorrow, okay? Exercise six is your homework. All right. Moving on. All right. These are our problem sets, okay? I know it says they do, but we're going to wait tomorrow. We're going to do this for classwork for number one. I want you to do number two for homework. And then number three, we're going to do this classwork. Okay? I want to discuss numbers one and three together. All right? That's it. This will be your video. We're going to pop this in, and we'll be able to go on. Okay? So uh, remember, this is your homework for tonight, guys.